Trivis Auto Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. This Best of Trivis Auto segment features an interview with Ron Kittle, former Chicago White Sox player, as well as a former Indian. In the book about what happened in Chicago, he was talking about Barry Bonds refusing to sign an autograph for him because he's white. Well, that got a lot of publicity, and Mike wanted an interview. All right, on our hotline, we have Ron Kittle. Uh, he played for the White Sox. He has the book out, Tales from the White Sox Dugout. Also played for the Indians in 1988. You Indians fan uh, remember Ron Kittle. Ron, how you doing today, Ron? I'm doing fine, thank you. Appreciate the uh, invite to talk. Hey, Ron, a lot of publicity with this book, huh? Yeah, more than I even thought about, to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> hey, if I'd have known this, I'd have wrote it 12 years ago. <laughs> you know, here you are. You write a book, uh, Ron Kittle's Tales from the White Sox Dugout. And I would presume that mo a lot of the publicity is coming from the Barry Bonds thing, huh? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's brought uh, national attention. I had a TV crew at my house this morning from Canada, and I got another one expected to show up at my house tomorrow. But, uh, you know, if I'd have known it brought that much attention, I would not even have mentioned the article. But the bottom line is it, it, it truly happened. And I just want the public to know that, you know, he treats people uh, the same way as he treats the players. So there's no difference. Yeah. And, Ron, for people that don't know, uh, you brought a couple of jerseys to him, asked, the, asked Barry to sign them, and Barry Bonds told you. What did he say to you? You know, I, I have a cancer charity that I founded in 89. It's called Indiana Sports Charities. And I work hard to make this an elite golf tournament, uh, memorabilia, auction item stuff. And uh, I took three jerseys to him, to tell you the truth. And I said, uh, Barry, Ron Kittle, I introduced myself professionally. I said, could you sign these charities? I showed him the brochure. And he just looked at me with some goofy old look, and he said, I don't sign for white people. And uh, he just walked out of the tunnel. Yeah. And, you know, I really thought he was joking, to tell you the truth, because I've been told no before, you know. But most of the time, they're joking. You know, when you're 6'4", 250 pounds, not too many people tell you no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan, w w uh, 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 what, what, in your mind, was he dead serious? I mean, because a lot of times ball players, I know here in radio we kid around, we say things off the air that we really don't mean because we play a lot, we bust a lot of you-know-whats. Was he dead serious, Ren? Dead serious. You know what, you guys had Albert Bell in town there for a long time, and uh, you know what, he told me he wouldn't sign anything either, and I called him Joey, which is his real name, and uh, he finally signed. He goes, you're the only person I'll sign for because I know you can probably whoop me. But uh, dead serious, you know, and and what happened, what, what kind of made it kind of foolish was the, his players around him started throwing baseballs at me that were autographed for auction items. Yeah. You know, so basically they were making excuses, sticking up for him. You know what? I'm just tired of people sticking up for the turds of the game. Yeah. That's what he is. He's a turd. And then he comes out, and uh, the, what, what I heard, I don't know how many responses he, he, he has made to uh, what you have said, but the one I did hear is he said, oh, that's ridiculous. I married a white woman. Yeah, you know, that's the same line he used when he got busted for steroids, too. So, uh, you know, if you look back about picking on him and his kids and his family, but y you know what? In all the articles that I've seen and all of his responses, there's nowhere in there that he says, I did not say it or did not deny it. Now, somebody told me that they heard you say, hey, I'll put my hand on the Bible. I swear to God he said it. You know, absolutely. And I told I told a TV crew from Canada today, I said, if somebody gave me $20 million today and said, would you change your story? I said, as much as I would like to have that $20 million, I would not change my story. Yeah. You know, it's very unfortunate. I grew up in Gary, Indiana, predominantly a black neighborhood, black friends, black classmates. Uh, everybody knows who I am. I'm a straight shooter. I tell it as it is. I'm more, uh, you know what, I'm blatantly honest. You know, I'm the kind of guy that, uh, you know, if a girl walks by with a nice hair and she's got her gray root show, and I'm saying, Miss, you need to do something with your hair. <laughs> you know, but that's my personality. You know what, and I can get away with stuff like that because, you know, I am honest. And, you know, and my re reputation perceives that through Chicago. You know, I, I, I've told the media, when I stunk, I stunk, you know, and that's how it's always been with me. Tell it as it is. Yeah. Hey, Ron, do you ever even remember at all your one year here in Cleveland? <laughs> you know what? I, I tell you, I hate, I'm not, I can't say I hate to tell you this. It was probably the most fun baseball season I've ever had there in Cleveland. We lived in the pink building, the hotel, the old Rocky River. I had a great time there. We had a really good team in the old ballpark. Unfortunately, three of our star pitchers got hurt at the same time. We went from first 
first place at the All-Star break to about the middle of the pack. But uh, And I wanted to come back. You know, I asked for a $5,000 raise, and they told me no. Then I became a free agent. So, uh, you know, like I said, I had a good time there. And I was just starting to get healthy again. I was doing my job well and having some fun in a great community. Ron, yeah, you've hit 35 home runs in the major leagues in one season, 32 home runs. What's the most you, not to be nosy, but what's the most you ever made in one year? You know, it's about five hundred some odd thousand dollars was uh, my peak salary, and uh, but you, you got to look back. I broke my neck my first game out of high school when I signed with the Dodgers, so I was always a liability. And anytime you're talking people making big money and you're a liability, you're not going to get it. And uh, you know, it's proven over the years. People who have bad injuries, they don't want to guarantee their contract. Uh, you know, when's it going to stop? When's it not going to hurt? Uh, in 1984, after my rookie year, I ran into uh, the concrete wall at Comiskey Park. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the next day, they wound up putting pads around the brick, but I already dislocated and uh, broke my collarbone. Right. You know, but, I mean, accidents happen, and uh, you know what? It, it, when you're a liability, you are a risk, and I understand that. Ron Kittle has the book out, Tales from the White Sox Dugout. And, Ron, before we let you go, uh, then it, 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 everything we hear about this goofball Barry Bonds is true then, huh? You know, I, I'm, I'm, that's the only thing I can say is it is true. It, it is very unfortunate because, you know what, he's a great ball player. He's done some great things in the game. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I think he's a bitter individual, period. You know, and, and if he was a plumber, he'd be a bitter individual. But the bottom line is he's given a gift. The public supports him. They cheer him on. Uh, he's making $15 million. You know, for $15 million a year, I would wear an ugly dress the rest of my life. I, I, I really, <laughs> you know, I have fun in life. I know I'm not going to be on this planet forever. I, but I do want to set an example for my kids and the people that I know that I tell it as it is. And I'm not going to make an excuse for it. And, uh, you know, those sports writers in Cleveland, they can tell you the same thing. I'm just very honest. And uh, I'm one of the few, maybe. Yeah, Ron, I know the same thing. I'm not going to be on this planet for life either, nor do I want to be you know <laughs> hey, hey ron matt williams uh he he's didn't he hear barry say it well i'm pretty sure everybody in the locker room heard him say it because i was standing right there i was there with a couple of the bat boys that i invited over uh i left the bat boys at the game i said you know what you guys stay here i'm going home i got on the phone i don't know how many people i called uh this happened about two weeks prior to my first golf tournament that i was having in 93 and I announced it at the golf tournament, exactly what he said. So, you know, there was probably 250 witnesses there, you know, who can say, you know what, he did tell me that at the story. I, why would I fabricate such a stuff like that? You know, he's notorious. Uh, I, I, like I said, I've been told no by other people. But, you know, if he had told me to go jump in the lake, that would have been fine. But not with that attitude because I, I work hard for this charity and I'm dedicated to it. And it was a slap in the face to me and my charity. Yeah. Amen. Did, did, did you want to kick his ass? Yeah, instantly. You know, I, I, I mean, you, nobody, there's a lot of people know how strong I am. You know, he came out that he invited me out there to get in a fight with him. You know, I mean, is it pre-steroid or post-steroid? I have no idea where he wants to kick my butt. But uh, it's more of a high school comment than anything. But, you know, out of all the articles, he did not deny it on one thing. And I, I guarantee you most people are on my side. Yeah. Well, I married a white woman, too, Ron. So did I. And, you know, I'm still regretting it. Hey, I married somebody from high school, and uh, we got a couple kids. But, you know what, I, I, I've given my book out to many of my uh, former teammates, and they've read the book. They all love it. They all know how I am. They know it's the truth. And you know what? When you get support by your peers, that's what you call a good book and a good comment. Where, where, the book, you go anywhere and get it, right? Uh, you know what? If anybody really wants it, they can go to my website, ronkittle.com. It was basically, you, you got to see what I'm making, but uh, the books, uh, it's a $20 book. For 25 bucks. I get you the book. I autograph it to whoever. I priority mail it to you, and I donate 250 out of every book to charity. And I've signed probably 750 books uh, that way already. All right, so that's ronkittle.com, right? Yeah, how funny is that, isn't it? Yeah, well, if I'd have known that, I would have, I would have bought that and sold it back to you. Hey, who would have thought a dot com would have been in anybody's conversation twenty some years ago? I don't know. I guess only Mark Cuban. I don't I know. Guess. Yeah, I, but I wish I would. I know one thing, Ron. I wish I would have thought of it. You know. Oh, and me too. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Ron, good luck to you with the book, and I'm sure glad you exposed that goofball. 
Well, I appreciate it, and, uh, you know, thanks for being honest with me and enjoying the little talk I had here. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Ron. Ron Bye. Kittle, you can go to ronkittle.com. He has the book out, Tales from the White Sox, dug out. And uh, Barry Bonds told Ron that he does not sign for white people. Best of Trevor I don't know that uh, Tom Jones is coming to Cleveland. I can't believe it. You know, I met Tom Jones, Allison, in Las Vegas. You did? Yeah. And he gave me a cell phone number. This was years ago. I still have it. You have Tom Jones' cell phone number. Yeah. So uh, you know, we got Tom Jones. I called him right now. We got him on our hotline. You did not. I did, too. I, I swear to God. You. I'm Tom Jones. Let me talk to him. Do you have any underwear? Uh, I <laughs> threw him at his last concert. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the phone line. Tom Jones. Hey, Tom, what are you doing in Cleveland? It's not unusual to be loved in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, him. Yeah, see, I told you. Hey, 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 Tom, you still got any girls left in Cleveland? <laughs> All right, easy, Tom. Easy, easy, easy. easy He's into this. Yeah, Tom doesn't talk much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Tom, um, is it true you take your cat when you go to all these cities for concerts? And what do you say to your cat? Oh, what's wrong with the cat? Ah, Tom, easy, Tom. Tom, uh, since you're in Cleveland, though, okay, uh, our mayor, Jane Campbell, what do you what do you think of the mayor, Tom? She's a lady. Oh, no, she's a lady. <laughs> easy, Tom, Tom, Tom. Don't hurt yourself before this concert. We know you're getting up in age. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Tom. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. It's not unusual. Exactly. He's working that singing thing. He, he just can't get him. All right, Tom. All right. I'll say it. Well, all right. Bye. Tom Jones. Woo. Bye, Tom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tom. I can't say thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Mike Tursano for Men Are Mitsubishi. Men Are Mitsubishi is located 99. That Black Sabbath has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right here in Cleveland. And Ozzy Osbourne, and the lead singer in Black Sabbath. He was the lead singer, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, I love yeah, Ozzy yeah. Osbourne. Meanwhile, you're all dressed in black today. I know, because yeah. it's my tribute to him. To Black Sabbath? Yes. All right. So we're going to go to our hotline where we have Ozzy Osbourne standing by. Oz, are you there? Hello? Hey, Oz, what's happening, Hello, buddy? Sharon! Uh-uh. Phone is working. <laughs> Hello? Oz, this is live radio, Ozzy. you got to watch your mouth just a oh, little. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You don't understand it. I'm uh, medication. Yeah, I, I understand. Well, you're, you're, you're inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland. Uh, happy? You coming? Or what do you... uh, great. Oh, yeah. uh, you can't say that. Uh. Now, Oz, you have to watch your language a little bit, okay? Now, will you bring Sharon? Will you come to Cleveland? Are, we, are you going to come to the Rock and Roll Hall Sharon, of Fame? Uh, if I go anywhere, i got to bring Sharon. She's got the medication. Ozzy, I have a question. So if you're new, like, inductee to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, do you think maybe you'll bring back your reality TV show? Bring back the TV? Why the f*** would I want to bring that back? It's nothing but a... It's a headache. It's nothing but a... There's problems in the family and the jack and the... All right, hang, hang, hang up on him, Marty. Hang up on him. Uh, I mean, yeah, this guy, every other word is an F bomb. I mean, I just can't. I try to have a civil conversation. He's a lot of control. He is definitely. He does need his <laughs> medication. Live, accurate, in depth storm tracking. Operation Storm Watch. Cleveland's fastest triple Doppler radar. Your official weather station. News Radio WTAM 1100. Channel 3, triple Doppler weather. Here's meteorologist Betsy Kling. Temperatures by morning bottoming out around the 30 degree mark with cloudy skies. A few patches of drizzle and even some snowflakes will be moving out as we head into the morning hours. Mostly cloudy skies hold on for the day Friday. Temperatures only top out in the upper 30s. For Saturday, we're expecting rain to move in early. Early in the day, warmer temperatures too, but the mercury will be falling as we head through New Year's Eve. That means that rain will be changing over to snow showers. That's your official weather station. Mist fog, 35 degrees. With Mary Sherman, I'm Carmen Angelo on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Continuing coverage coming up at the bottom of the hour. Breaking news as it happens. News radio, WTAM 1100. Time now to get you home with Sky Chief Traffic and Weather together on the 10s. 
A service of Clear Channel traffic. Here's Pat Butler. 90 West, an accident just before West 25th Street. It's moved off on the right berm with police on the scene. However, it does have you backed up onto the inner belt over to East 9th Street right now. Another accident spot, 480 East on the Valley View Bridge. That's in the left berm. And checking the crowd center cam, 77 South. Slowing down from Rockside to Pleasant Valley. Pat Butler, Sky Chief Traffic. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Rain and snow ending tonight. A low of 30 right now, 35 degrees. News Radio, WTAM 1100. This is the best of the Mike Trivisano Show on News Radio, WTAM. WTAM 1100. This segment on the best of Trivisano comes from October 2005. Cleveland City Councilman Michael Polensic was in studio talking about how he is fed up with crime in the city and basically would not mind seeing criminals become an endangered species. Well, that prompted a call from Black on Black Crime Incorporated founder, Art McCoy, and this was their conversation. Uh, Councilman Michael Polensic is in the, uh, in the studio with us and, uh, and Art McCoy is on our hotline. Uh, Mr. McCoy. Yes, uh, hello there, Mike Trivisano. No justice, no peace. Well, forget me. Talk to Mr. Polensic here. Uh, Mr. Polensic, I hear you talking about crime and how it affects the cities, and we agree with you 100% on what you're talking about as far as crime is concerned. But I want you to know right now that uh, when you talk about crime, black people are as sick of crime as anyone else. I want you to understand that. But the problem is, and we want to fight crime as great as anybody else, but the problem is, Mr. Polensic, you keep making these underlying racist statements, something like uh, Mr. Benick is making about uh, uh, taking black folks and uh, eliminating them without uh, due process of justice, and I've talked to many people in your ward. Art? They don't like your comments. Where yet. have I ever made that comment? Art? You're not. You're telling. A tr you're not telling the truth, Art. Again, the you're truth. trying you to play. That comment Art, the, the other day, I was Art, You know what? I, I'm going to tell you exactly what I said. What I said I don't. I'm, I'm going to make it very clear. I don't care if the criminals are an endangered species, and that's. And I don't care. And that's how I feel, Art. Now you want to play the race card. Well, what about due process? Well, let me tell you, there is due process. And had that that, that had that fellow the other day. Put up his hands and got down and, and gave up. He would have had due process and he most probably would have been on this, out on the street the very next day on bond. Okay, that's the due process. It's obey the law. It's, it's, it's respect the police. It's don't fight the police. All right, let me tell you something. Because you know what? You need to be told this. Look who the, the majority of victims are in this city. They're black people in Cleveland. That's who the victims are. You don't even stand up for your own people All right, who so, are being so, victimized every day. So you, you, so you're telling me, you're telling me All right. that... Yeah. Uh, you got your hands full here today, buddy. I don't have my hands full. Oh, yeah, you, oh, yeah, you do. Uh, you, you finally got a politician. Wait a minute, man. Art, Art, I'll let you go, but just let me say this to you. You finally have a politician that's going to talk back to you. Now, go ahead. Well, that's all right about him talking about back. But He's let me not going to kiss your ass anymore, Art. See, here, here's the problem with Mr. Polensic. Mr. Polensic mm -hmm. come with these underlying racist tone. Now, if you want to deal with crime, I've been fighting crime for over 25 years. But he come with this underlying and racist tone. Oh, sure. I, 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 sure. I, 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 that's off. always, you know, it's, that's, that's always the excuse. Out. It's the cop-out. Art, you know what? No Art, 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 don't get it. Art, you know. Listen to some of the other Art, callers, and Art, they're going to tell all right, go get a job, man, will you? Get a job. Get a life job. Get a, get a job, Art, will you? That's what I want. Go get a life and go get a job. You know what, Polensic, we're going to do? We're going to get you unemployed because we're going to run somebody against your little racist self. Well, Art, Art, you can get another job. Art, you, can, you can bring it. I think you should, go, you should go back and worry about the crime in East Cleveland. That's what you should worry about, the crime in East Cleveland. And stand up for, your, for the people who are being victimized rather than being and an enabler, and rather than being being worried about the criminals, that's what you should be worried about, the people who are being victimized every day. We are worried about them, and the black people who are victimized are very concerned about this. But likewise, we're concerned about your racist attitude, talking about eliminating people without due process, and, and condoning the police. That Art, he, Art, he never said that. That's Art. exactly. He never said that. Of course. No, no, he never said to eliminate the black. He never said eliminate the black people without due process. He never said that. He said, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
said. Michael, tell him what you I said. I said exactly. I said the criminals should be an endangered species, and I have no problem with saying that. All right, and I tell you, the majority of people feel like that. You all are Americans. You believe in the Constitution. You believe in the Bill of Rights. And, the, and, and all of that say that Art. You, you are what? Art. You're not going to win this one, buddy. I'm not trying to win anything. You're I making a fool. You're making a fool out of yourself because your own neighborhoods are agreeing with Polensic Art. Your own people are agreeing with Michael Polensic. They're calling them. They're coming to them. They're emailing them. Your own people are are telling you you're wrong and Polensic is right. Well, I'll Michael, tell, tell them, Michael. I, you know, I, 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 you're out of touch. You're out of touch with reality. You're old-fashioned. You're the, washed up. Our, you're through. You, you ought to look at the police reports. The majority of victims in this city are black. They're young. They're single moms trying to hold families together. Those are the victims. It's the poorest the poor who have been victimized in this city, and you don't care about I them. I do care about it. No, That's you black don't, Art. Black on black crime. You what ain't you doing about? nothing about it, Art McCoy. You ain't improved the situation one bit, buddy. Here's a councilman that's finally got the balls to, to open his mouth. He's the only one in the city of Cleveland. And you want to do shows on how bad the police are. Listen, there are good policemen, there are bad policemen. Well, there's way more bad but criminals but, but than there I'll are good criminals. This. Council Polesic has racial... All he wants. It's Art. a crutch. It's a typical it, crutch. It's, I mean, Art, it's a crutch we've heard for so long. Art, you're embarrassing yourself, Art. I love you to death, you know that. But you're embarrassing yourself. That's all right. As soon as you're trapped in a corner, you bring up the racial end of it. There's no racial uh, motivation for Polensic here. You don't think so? <laughs> oh, Jesus, God. God bless, God bless you all. We'll let the callers decide. No, we'll let the voters decide because the more you just try to destroy them, the more I'll promote them. And I'll win with this microphone. You could drive around with that stupid car you got with the loudspeaker on it. But I got 50,000 watts, McCoy. Remember that. All right, Drew Lozano. No yeah. justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. That's for sure. That's McCoy, Michael Pence. That's right. No justice, no peace. You know what? If you look at the with the call, you know, I had a black minister call me yesterday. He said, "You know what? I I pray for the for the I pray for not only the victims. I pray for these young men and women who are committing these crimes. But you know what, councilman? You know what? I feel just like you do. I've been at too many funerals. I've seen too many victims. And you know what? I stand with you. And and those are the kind of calls that I've received." Ever since I, I, I said what I had to say, and I'm going to continue to say what I have to because people are fed up. Yeah. I see who the victims are. I see who's being hurt. I see who's, whose lives are being taken away and, who's, and, who, and they don't have the opportunity and kids who are trying to succeed. And then again, we have you know, guys like Art running around like you know, an Energizer buddy on steroids with a megaphone. It's like, wait a minute. It, it, you know, you get, get, a, get a life, get a job. You know, if you really want to improve things, let's figure out what we can do to, to redirect some people's lives, to, to get them straight. And but, Michael, but the, make excuses all the time, all the freaking time, making excuses. The black community is coming to you and saying, help us, aren't they? Uh, the, 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 you know Why what? is he calling you a racist? He could, you know, just so he spells my name right. I don't care what he yeah, calls but me. But I mean, what would even direct them in that because area? Because, you know what it is? It's the crutch. It's the crutch that I'm sick of that I have witnessed so often in, in our community and our city. It's the race car that always gets thrown at you at the, when you have nothing else to throw at someone. And they could throw it at me all, all they want. I've done everything I could for the residents of my community, and I will, I'm going to continue to do so. But and what you know percentage what? of your com residents are black, would you it, say? It, about 60%. About 60%. Right. But yeah, he wants to call you a racist. Sure. And, I, I'm, and I'm on a pose for election. Right. You know, the, 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 some, and some of the, the hardest working folks in my community, some of my greatest supporters are, are, are black residents, African-American residents, who are fed up. Because, I, you know, when they killed Bill Singleton, uh, one of the most decent black businessmen you've ever seen in this city, on Lakeshore Boulevard a year ago, gunned him down like he was a, a, like lower than a dog, a, a veteran, a, a man who was taking care of a, of a, 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 a stricken wife who was his, her, her only caregiver. Only caregiver. A man that when Why we Why did they kill him? Just they, to kill they, him? When he was opening his store. They pounced oh, on him okay. and killed him. Right. I mean, uh, a man who was... Uh, when we had our annual Martin Luther Day King cel cel ceremony and, and celebration, the first guy to step up to the plate to donate. They killed him on a Tuesday morning. I was supposed to have breakfast with him on a Thursday morning. Where was Art and the, 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 the group who, who, about 
Bill Singleton. They could care less what happened to him. What? Black man? Yes, he was. Yeah. One of the most decentest people you ever want to meet. Yeah. Gunned down less than a dog. How many Bill Singletons have there been in this city? How many, how many ladies like over there in Slavic Village have gotten their heads knocked in? It's not about black and it's not about white. Our, get, you better understand it's about the thugs and the hoodlums that are running our streets. Yeah. Mr. Plensick, i got to let you go. It's been an hour already. Do you believe how fast an hour goes by? Yes. It's, it's unbelievable. But again, you have the invitation. Anytime you need this show, anytime you need this audience, well, anytime you need this microphone, you just, if it's on the phone or in the studio, feel free. Well, Mike, as I said, you know what? I, I'm not backing off at this point. I mean, I, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said. There's a, there's a lot that has been said already. But you know what I say? There are people who are listening to you and the people who, who really care about the city and care about the communities. We've got to rise up. We've got to hold people accountable. We've got to set a standard and a tone on each one of our blocks, uh, whether it be graffiti, litter, the, the filth. It's, you know, some people who, who think they're rich because they have two junk cars in their yard. It's about quality of life. We've got to take back one street, one block at a time. I'm not running. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to give up to the thugs and the hoodlums. And as I said before, and I'll say again, they need to be an endangered species. We need to make it. They either got to conform with community standards, or they got to get out of our communities or go wherever they want. And if Art wants to go with them, he can be my guest. And it don't matter if they're white, black, I don't care what color, purple. what nationality. Exactly. They come in all shapes and colors yeah. in this city. All right, Mr. Plensick, thank you for your time, and uh, feel free to be here again, okay? Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> That is from this past summer, Michael Plensick, uh, city councilman, and Art McCoy on the best of Trivisano. Traffic. is on News Radio WTAM 1100. And now back to the best of Trivisano. Do you remember when all those naked people went down and posed on the ground by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and had some newscasters that went as well? Well, three young ladies from Clear Channel went down, and then afterwards they jumped in the studio and talked to Mike about their exposed experience. Levon Putney from our news department has joined us. Levon, your, your assignment Saturday, I was jealous when I turned the radio on. You covered the nude photo shoot downtown, huh? Man, Mike, I don't think I'll ever uh, get a chance to interview people without clothes on again. <laughs> when, when you, 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 you were clothed, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I mean, I didn't know if they wanted the media to be naked. They covered it also. Some of events like that, in one, if you want to be part of it and cover it, you've got to be naked, too, I heard. I mean, not in this one, right? That may be, but, yeah, if that was the case, I, I probably would have covered another story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was it like standing there talking to somebody naked? I don't know how to describe that one. I honestly don't. I've been trying to tell people all day, I really don't know. Uh, it was the wildest thing I've ever had to have done. It was probably the funniest. Uh, you have, what, 2,700 butt-naked people running right by you and <laughs> head over there to go, to go uh, pose for these pictures. And, you know, and I'm running along with them. Hey, so uh, what are you looking like? You know, how do you feel right now? Cold. Should, should some of them have been clothed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 All right, we have uh, three young ladies. Leo, stick with us. Uh, uh, we have Heather, Michelle, and Kristen. Uh, oh. All three were downtown. Why? First of all, we'll start, yes. we'll start with you, Heather. Why? Uh, why, huh? my reason for doing it in the yeah, first place? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that it was a good opportunity to get over some fears about my self-esteem and body image, and I think it was also a great thing to do for art. I mean, I saw the man's work, and it's beautiful. Sure. So. I'm having one Saturday in my backyard. If you guys want to show up, it, it, it's art. It's art. It's art. Yeah, yeah. I've got a camera. Yeah. I've got a camera. Uh, yeah. Uh, anytime you want to practice, uh, just let me know here. I mean, you know. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. you know. I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle, why, why did you... Uh... Um, I went down because I figured, when else are you going to be able to get naked downtown and not get arrested? When you get drunk, you can do it. Well, yeah. 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 But at least this is, you know, somewhat... I mean, it's a nice story to tell the grandkids. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, we get a print exactly. of it, so... It's kind of neat. Oh did you see Levi by any chance? <laughs> they yes, waited till I got yeah. They waited till I got dressed him. to come to me. Yeah. After we were clothed, we did see him and we did go over and say hi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Kristen, uh, how come? Um, I saw a documentary on him on HBO, HBO last yeah, year called I The Naked too. Truth, and then I like went on his website and signed up, and I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm like, I don't have anything that anyone hasn't seen before, so I'm gonna do it. Oh. It's fun and it's history. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, now, when you were laying on the ground, Kristen, were you close to each other? We were pretty close. We were probably about like um, 
I don't know, like a foot apart. Ooh. But like the girls' yeah. pose was even closer. Like they did an all girls' pose. Wait, we did a group <laughs> pose first, then an all girls' pose, then an all guys' pose. And the all girls' pose, we were pretty close. And Levon was there for the all girl pose. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for my job, I had, to, I had to look for my job. Yeah. Yeah. I had to right. know how to describe the scene. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> were you. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't laugh, man. I'm trying to be. Did, did you see any guys? Sound serious. Did you see any guys? Let me put it this way: uh, that you went. <laughs> put your pants on. <laughs> I was trying not to look that far down. Yeah. but there, there. You, it's unavoidable, so in a couple cases. Um, so now you're holding a microphone for the news department. Yeah. Yvonne, and the first, the woman across from you is naked. Where were your eyes? The, for the most part, if it was a guy, I'm looking him dead in the face. What about uh, the, 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 the woman? Well, the ladies, well, I yeah, would look seriously. him in the face. I would look at him in the eye. But if I made issue of the fact that they were naked, it gave me a license to look down. down. And so, yeah. well, in their meeting, they call it elevator eyes. You remember that? Were you in that meeting? Any yeah, yeah, we were in that meeting. <laughs> yeah. now, now, Heather, you had a you had a sort of a pervert come up to you, huh? Yeah, I called him ugly naked guy, and he was the first one naked at the whole thing. Oh, yeah, like he four, was the guy. four in the morning. He was just naked. walking around there naked. Right, and then all of a sudden, like this was after our. I think it was after our just group pose with the women. Yeah. And just from out of nowhere, he just rubs up against me and just lingered Ooh. a little bit too long. And, yeah. Ooh. Yuck. So, yeah, that was the only thing I that I had. That was I have good. to ask this question, and I'm probably going to get it written up again, but I don't know. No, this, hey, this is for art. I should not get written up. <laughs> That's right. This is for art, okay? It's art. Go for it. What, because this would be one of the first things I know people are out there are thinking, okay? It's hard to tell when a woman is aroused. It's very easy to tell when a man is aroused. Well, as cold as it, it was. It was way too cold. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. It was 57 degrees it the was whole so time cold. we were out there. Yeah, so no aroused men? No, and no. we looked. I mean, we didn't, but we looked. <laughs> yeah, 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 we looked, yeah. Maybe. See, now, I would be embarrassed if that happened to me. Do you follow me? And, you know, I would say, oh, you know. I mean, you know. Yeah, well, but what do you they, do? Go stand behind a tree? They were walking around uncovered. They didn't seem to care. Yeah. No, they, they, it, I didn't ask they weren't know. any inhibitions about that. Yeah, yeah. no, not at all. They were just all. walking around. Yeah. And it never got above, like, 57 degrees. Chris, really where, where did you take your clothes off at? It wasn't right on West East 9th Street, right? No, we took it off and put it over in Voinovich Park and left our clothes <laughs> over there. And then, like, all walked over naked, uh, like, over to East 9th to the um, pier. Over no. by the ship. Okay, now. <laughs> I, the, I know what Voinovich was saying. I, I interviewed him. Voinovich said, I wish I was at my park that day. That's right. That's what he was saying. Sure. Yes. Uh, well, did, did, was anybody's clothes missing when you came back? No, but there was. I mean. There was some yeah. people, like, searching and looking for their clothes, no. and I felt so bad. Oh, and that's yes. what we were worried about. If someone comes back and takes your clothes, like, I kept my car key in my hand the whole time because you never know, like, if someone's going to come mm -hmm. take your stuff. But there was so much, like, security there and um, volunteers from the <laughs> Contemporary Art Museum. And, yeah, Very we were walking vital. around, like, looking for There was clothes. a guy. He was, well, he had been drinking too much that night before. And, uh, yeah, I was standing next to him, and he, like, I can't find my clothes, dude. <laughs> yeah. And so I interviewed him, and, yeah, I talked to him about that. Next time you can't find your clothes, girls, just call me. I'll come and get you. I Today, well, all weekend, in fact, and especially today, I've been writing in my journal, too, is I, I just feel empowered by it. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, before I felt like, well, I had this, you know, skewed body image that I think a lot of women have. And it's hard when you see it. I mean, that's nothing you see in the media is, like, reflected in real life. It's all, like, these, you know, stick figure women. That's not the way women are right now. And for me to go down there is very empowering, knowing that I'm not abnormal. This is, you know, a lot of people look like me. Right. And I, I think that every... Le Levi like, uh, just brought a good, a good point. I said, yeah, I mean, really, did you ever think we could pull something like this off in Cleveland? I mean, with so many people out there. I mean, you well, just we turned out in America. No. Yeah, yeah, right? It was, they've been, they've been, um, like, recruiting people since December for it. Yeah. So, I mean, they've been constantly, like, talking about it. Mm -hmm. But it was still but, amazing, just the yeah. number of people the, the that number. came out and showed up. And, yeah, we didn't have any you know, problems that I know of. At four in the morning. He gets some people coming from all over the world to follow him wherever he does these things. But mm -hmm. most of these people were from around yeah. here. Right. Michelle, anybody that should have kept their clothes on, was there? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, yeah, there were a couple people that probably <laughs> should have kept their clothes yeah. on. But overall, I mean, it just it wasn't too bad. Kind of made you feel a little bit better about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've it, seen it all. Was it a last second decision? What did you guys uh, decide you were going to do it? I decided back in December I was going to do it, and then I like recruited them. I'm yeah. like, please come with me, so I'm not by myself. Heather told me Friday in the hallway here that she was going to yeah, go. Yeah, and I do thought it. you were coming with me. And uh, you, yeah, you, I, I know thought you, were, I thought you were kidding. I really did. You didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Big Daddy. Girls, were you surprised that it was on the front page of the Plain Dealer? I was. Yeah, I, w I was too. Especially my grandma saw the paper first, and she called me first thing yesterday morning, and she said, I think I found you. Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, trying to describe to me over the Waldo. phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can you find yourself in this photograph? Um, the one on the front page, no, because that's a little bit further up than we were. We were kind of back further. Um, but once we get our print, we'll probably be able to figure out where we were. If you look at the photograph in Sunday's paper on the front page where they have all the nude people laying on West and East 9th Street, there's a woman right in the middle sitting up, <laughs> turning around, talking to a guy behind her. It looked, I wonder if that guy like did something that she didn't like, you know what I mean? That's what it looks like, you know? It could be. Like, he's ye like she's yelling at him, you know? It could be, but there was only like one megaphone, so it was kind of hard to hear him. So everyone kind of was like looking up, figuring out what to do. <laughs> Just unbelievable. one megaphone. Unbelievable. You know, you would think that they would do it like inside Cleveland Brown Stadium or something, you know, where... Were there a lot of people clothed that were able to watch? No. No, you had... It was, like, real gated off. It was, like, pretty oh. tight security. You had to have... I mean, they had, like... Um, there was some police there. There was, like, the tenable security people, and you had to have, like, a release form to get in. Yeah. Well, what if someone like me would have went with you guys, and, of course, I wouldn't have gotten naked because the other men would have felt so inferior. <laughs> they would have scared most of them away. But what if I were went to Voinovich Park with you three? And you guys got naked, and I just stood there and watched, and then I didn't take my clothes off. What would they have done? Throw me out? No. No, probably no. not. You probably would have been able to do that. Oh, did anybody do that that you noticed? I saw a couple guys when they did the guys shoot that didn't go. That, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, once they started digging up. Yeah. yeah. All right, before we let you go, we'll start with Heather. Would you do it again? Yeah, tomorrow, today. Absolutely. Hmm. Really? In the rain? I thought it was an amazing, it was like a spiritual experience. What did your husband say? I've been divorced for six months. <laughs> Way to go, Mike. Oh, Hi. yeah. Oh. My husband. Amen to that. We've been filming in on these things, <laughs> would you? None of us knew. <laughs> Marty knew that. Why well, didn't you, Why didn't you tell me the last time I was talking to you, you wanted to fix your heater? I know. Mm. I'm sorry. That's okay. Michelle it's a blessing Michelle sometimes. I'm married. I'm either. married. All right, Mich All right, Mich what would your husband have said? <laughs> well, he would have divorced me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michelle? Um, my husband was okay with it. He, I actually asked him to go, and he thought that his um, golf tee time was a little more important than right. posing naked downtown. Um, but when I did ask him before you know, everyone knew about it, I said, if I get arrested, will you come pick me up? And he said, no, call your mom. So. <laughs> but he he was okay with it. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a big it. deal. Kristen, you're not married, right? No, I have a boyfriend. And what he but say? he's in England, so oh, he well. can't be mad at me now. <laughs> <laughs> but <I'm old> that. <laughs> I wish he would have done it with me, but I'm telling you, I would do it again. I saw so many different body types, and being out there, I was like, you know what? I'm like, my body's not that bad. I'm like, so my confidence is like so much better now. Hey, be a little serious with me here. Now. Okay. Dead serious. With okay. Me. Did you get turned on? Good God, no. <laughs> but you know what? It's like a train wreck, and you couldn't stop staring. It was so bad, I couldn't stop staring. When they did the all-guy pose, I couldn't stop staring. <laughs> did you get turned on, Michelle? No, not at all. Heather? No. No. So that, that feeling doesn't even... <laughs> it was too cold. That feeling doesn't even come into play then, huh? No, not at all. And anytime you want to practice, you know where my office is, okay? okay. All right. Actually, it really is my office, even though Marty has his name on it and took it over and threw me out. And really, it. Oh, I've been with these girls for how many years? Have I hit on any one of you girls ever? No. No. No comment. Yeah, well, <laughs> I would have liked to seen the whole thing, you know, for yeah, some odd reason. Both. I don't know why. You did scare off a lot, though. though I did, I, yeah, when I took my pants off, they said the men started to scatter, you know, because they felt inferior. I saw those cat muscles. I put the rest about the black man that's thing that's when I took my pants off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's uh, great googly moogly. Actually, uh, I don't think I could do that. Could you, Snipes? Nah, I...
No. no. Yeah, I would do it if you all did it. Marty, you would do anything. <laughs> Right. You're not a fair gauge, Marty. <laughs> I, I just have a hard... You'd jump on a rattlesnake if it didn't bite you. <laughs> I just have a hard time to see you, me... And Marty and Paul. Yeah. <laughs> At 4 o'clock Sunday morning. <laughs> Why do you live? Uh, just... right, you know what would be the most comical thing I was... Th don't tell me... Don't even ask me why this entered my mind. Imagine, now wait, before you laugh, let me finish, okay? Imagine Bruce Drennan naked. Okay, and then talk, that voice coming out of that naked body. Okay, where do I stand? Yes. All right, it is cold, it is early in the morning. Now he's and naked, I'm not right? Used to this. Visualize that, and nice. I need to know where you hear I'm that going. voice, right? Where do I lay down? Where do I lay down? You with the camera, will you please tell me where I lay down? I am not stepping over all these people to get in my spot. Now tell these people to so the guy, there'd be somebody. <laughs> oh, my. This is the best of Triv uh, Sano, and that was obviously from a couple years ago when we had all the, uh, uh, well, the photo shoot. I'm sure you remember it. Pat Butler remembers it. This, up, uh, uh, <laughs> Pat, do you remember it? Looking back, I, I regret not going down there and posing. Okay. I, I wish I would have felt that liberation. Okay, to go down there and pose or to go down there and watch? Well, you know, both. What was, the, what was that, uh, that photographer's name? Spencer Tunick. Yeah, that's the guy. That's yeah. the guy. This, yeah. uh, this traffic is a service of Claritin D. Here is...